The Miami Dolphins finished their cuts to 53 last week but with the regular season now only days from starting some of these players should not have made the team. When it comes to deciding on who should make the roster and who shouldn't, it really comes down to a subjective view. Whether it is because a player makes more than some may think he is worth, or his performance on the field is inconsistent, we all have our own thoughts on who should and should not be on the team. This extends to the practice squad as well. Miami has filled their PS and to be honest, I can think of at least one person who is on it that shouldn't be. At some point, you have to give up on a guy and Isaiah Ford made it back yet again and I'm pretty sure that his release is inevitable as his re-signing. It seems that this is a revolving door situation. As for the 53-man roster, some have questioned whether or not Jakeem Grant should be on the roster but truth be told, he likely wasn't going to get the Dolphins much in a trade and with his willingness to restructure his contract, he is now being paid, at $3 million, what a top returner should be paid. While Grant is worth a roster spot and Ford maybe not so much given his continual status change, these three players probably could have been left off the 53. Clayton Figidellum is primarily a special teams player and while that is good to have, the Dolphins are overpaying him. He hasn't really done much during his time with Miami and the team could have used his roster spot for someone off the free agent market. The Dolphins are paying him $2.47 million and that will be fully guaranteed on Sunday. That is money that could have been saved and used on another player's contract extension. Mike Jasicki or Emmanuel Ogba perhaps? I'm not against Fiji Dellum, in fact, it's quite the opposite. I like him but I don't see the value in what he brings to the team and I think it could be money spent better on other needs. Regardless, there is a value to him that the Dolphins see and if they believe that he will be a standout on special teams then maybe he will be a focal point of that unit. Seathan Carter is the team's fifth tight end and I still am trying to figure out why and how the Dolphins decided to keep five tight ends on the team. Carter is behind Durham Smythe and rookie Hunter Long and even with the current Adam Shaheen situation, on the COVID IR list, Carter seems to be more luxury than a necessity. The Dolphins could have used the roster spot for another offensive lineman or a running back instead. Carter wasn't likely going to be claimed off waivers and the Dolphins could have brought him back after week one. Carter is set to count $2.7 million against the Dolphins' cap this year and Miami would only have saved $1.5 million had they released him. Perhaps that is part of the reasoning for keeping him around. Another possibility and frankly, a more likely reason is the fact that Carter is a better blocker than most of the other tight ends and with the Dolphins' struggles at right tackle, Carter may be called upon to act as an outside blocker to help Austin Jackson. It would make sense and in fact, would be the only real reason that Miami opted to carry five on the roster. Jamal Perry didn't have a great preseason and the third-year defensive back is only depth at a deep position. Perry would likely have cleared the waiver wire and could have been added to the practice squad. The problem is he showed at least a little more than Noah Igbenogany and Miami isn't ready to cut bait on Noah quite yet. Perry has had some good games and plays but his volume of work and resume doesn't have a lot on it and that may be a good thing. He needs to get work in but I'm not certain that he will see an active status throughout the year. Miami is carrying quite a few defensive backs into the season and that isn't surprising given Brian Flores' love for the secondary. Perry needs to take a step forward this year and find some consistency. It will be interesting to see what kind of work volume he gets this season. Like the other on this list, it makes you wonder what Miami could have done with their roster but they could also be looking to see what happens after week one as some veterans who will not be on a roster will be able to join teams without the fully guaranteed salary for 2021. Miami could add one or two players after Sunday's game and Perry could be on the outside if that happens.